All right, welcome back to another video. Don't mind the fantastic weather that we're dealing with. Leader Caravan, Leader Gold, came here with a full Red Arc Manager 30 system and just the two solar panels on the roof. It's a 20, 2020 model, I think, or 2022 or something. And the solar panels on the roof are one 80s i believe so there's the red arc manager 30 and that's where it was sitting up there with all the inputs coming in and then up top up here was the red arc manager 30 screen so that screen is going to get deleted and we're going to put a servo up there you've got the rv electronic tank senders that were here that uh, we're pulling out from underneath, rerunning them up to under the bed, and then we're going to hook them into the Victron system. Got the MultiPlus sitting there in place. Do some penetrations through the floor down here. Going to have 50 amp DC charger, 50 amp solar for the roof. We are going to add some uh, panels to the roof. We're going to add a further 180 and a 225. The original installer put a cowfish in town on the roof. I'll show you, and it's just in a horrible position. So we actually couldn't really get any extra solar on the roof without taking off the two panels above me, which would just send the budget out of range for the customer. So we're going to work with what we've got. Realistically, they're going to be seen at like 40 amps on a cracker day which is not too bad. The battery box has been modded up. As you can see here, this was the original battery box and now we've had the welder in and the battery box has been welded and extended so that we can fit. The customer supplied two 230 amp hour lithiums. They're like a slim line. So they were the only batteries that would fit in that box. When we do stuff like this, you've got two options. If the standard battery doesn't fit, you can do what we've done here and extend the box or the fabricator that we use can also cut the box off completely, gal up, a cold gal where they've cut the welds off the chassis and then re-weld on a fully new box to fit. So like in two jobs time, I believe, there'll be a video of us doing exactly that to fit two 350 amp hours into the battery boxes outside in regards to like this van we're not doing anything else fancy like exterior lights starlink any of that sort of stuff and we're just giving him an extra power anderson poke power in his front box for, for, like he's got another fridge in that front box being black the fridge is going to get hot so it will not run very efficiently i will recommend that the customer put some ventilation on that box, most certainly. Access wise for the 240, obviously the multipass is going under the bed. So we're gonna go through the floor, along the chassis underneath, up behind the fridge, to the overheads, across in the overheads, up to the 240 circuit breakers. Now that'll be the HDMI cable for the Victron screen. That'll be power for the screen because the screen power is USB and the USB extenders that they'd be too long to run it off there. You just burn out the USB port on the servo. Two 240 ACs, one for to tap into the input and then tap into the output for the multi-plus. And then the output circuit breaker will go down the bottom. So this is what we're dealing with up here. We've got some U-Butte massive double screw BPs that just connect a whole heap of the uh, 240 stuff together and then we've got the fridge just hanging out at the moment so we've got access to behind it and then there is also a little access hatch underneath the fridge i'll show you i don't have it on me right now it's in your office and i can't be able to get it but little rv electronic smart signal converter i'll show you what we're using to uh, transfer the tank level sensors from the rv electronic ones like you saw earlier onto the picture on screen and uh, we'll show you the solar and stuff as we go. The van is now complete. Obviously you would have seen in the previous sections of the video everything that was happening. Now we are all finished. Victron 3 kV Multi Plus, 70 mil cable, 300 amp manual reset circuit breaker. You've got your AC output RCD here. And then we've reused the AC input RCD up here. So this one will do like the shore power charging side of the multi plus and this one down here does the rest of the beam 
Um, we've kept the breakaway exactly where it was and the power point. And this fuse panel we've modified a little bit and then also added in our own fuse panel. We've got the servo, 20 amp solar controller for the ground, solar ground array, as you can see there on the labels. You got solar one, which is looking after the roof with the isolator just next to it. Then you got your 50 amp DC charger. Now, we have hooked up the ignition wire, uh, but when the customer gets here now, I'm just gonna get a little loop cable ready because a lot of the time on the Red Arc Manager 30s, yes, they hook up the ignition wire, but sometimes the car isn't wired with an ignition wire to the 12 pin. And secondly, the Red Arc Manager 30, unless you actually configure it in the settings, it, it doesn't work the same way that the Victron one does with the uh, ignition wire. So with the Victron one's the ignition wire, it turns the charger on and off in a charging sense, as where with the Manager 30, it sort of just uses it as like a, as like a sensing wire to be like, all right, yes, we do have power here and our voltage from our input is high enough, let's charge. But even still, if the voltage from the input is high enough and there's no power to the ignition wire, they'll still charge. Unless you've got it set on like the 12 volt ignition wire only setting on the Manager 30. So just one thing to be mindful of. And then, yeah, like I said, we have to rewire the bottom midi fuse panel a little bit, added our own one in. And then we're using the uh, RV electronic smart signal converter four channel to get all the tanks up onto the screen. We've got a little fuse here, which is labeled Victron system. Now, for some reason, if the servo screen ever stops working, turns off, the Bluetooth is jammed up on the servo, uh, the customer can just pull that fuse out, leave it out 10 seconds, put it back in, away we go. And that'll reset the system. Now, I've moved the van outside, so we're getting a bit of solar in through the roof. Roughly 16 amps of charge. We're getting 20 volts roughly at 13, 14 amps, which is equating to, yeah, roughly 16 amps of charge whilst we're using a little bit of the inverter, which I'll just turn off. Yeah, so it's going up now, 17, 18 odd amps. Just while I'm out here, I'll show you the roof. So the customer had the two 180 watt panels um, to marry up the voltage, we've used the Exotronic panels. We've got a 225 here and a 180. Them two are the same voltage and these two are very similar voltage. I did the math for the customer and we're gonna be running at roughly 97% efficiency. Realistically, in summer, he should be seeing like 35, 40 amps, like for Australian conditions. We sat, I sat down with him when he dropped it off and we could have, done all the panels on the roof but for that extra three percent of efficiency and the extra money that it was going to cost i said honestly it's not worth it just keep it how it is add the panels you want and then in 10 years time 15 years time if you still got the van just change all the panels i'm going to show you the batteries so the customer supplied two slimline 230 amp hour batteries we've got the ip67 bluetooth shunt up here now, these batteries are Bluetooth. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the app up on my phone and I'm gonna show you the batteries and how they work when they are wired correctly. So, if you give me a sec, I'm gonna run, get the kettle going. Um, let me turn the inverter on. Now, something that we see all the time and I've mentioned it in videos in the past is batteries being wired incorrectly. So if you've got two or three batteries in a system and they are wired in a way that is not satisfactory and they are wired, uh, all the actives and all the neutrals come off one and then there's just daisy chain like links to the other batteries. Incorrect way to do it, especially with lithiums. So active off one battery, neutral off the other because we've got two. And this is why you have to wire them like this because otherwise your batteries will fall out of balance. We've got the kettle cranking, which is pulling 150 amps on the dot. Plus, like, just be mindful there's a bit of solar. So we should see roughly 75 amps on the app, which is exactly right. Now, let me go into the second battery on the system. Still pulling exactly 150 amps. 
76 amps. So because of the way that we've wired the batteries, you've got 75 amps off on 76, so they're both gonna run down at the same amount, they're both gonna charge up at the same amount. You wire cables to the first battery and then daisy chain second, daisy chain third, you'll have probably 110 amps coming off one battery and then you'll have like 40 amps coming off the other, they'll fall out of sync uh, and then the balance is always constantly working to balance each other. Not good, You're not gonna get the most life out of your lithiums. So, kettle on. All right, running that. Let's turn on the sandwich press as well. We're now pulling three and a half thousand watts and it's 345 amps. Your wattage here is what's actually coming off the battery and then you have going from DC to AC through the inverter, you get conversion losses. That's why that wattage number here and the wattage number on the battery is actually different. So off the batteries, we're pulling 400, uh, 4,300 watts. Now, if I go back onto the app, it's saying that one battery is drawing 177 amps right now, and it's saying the other battery is drawing 179 amps. Again, perfect for what we need in this system. Just turn all that off. Batteries are at 94%, solar's gonna charge them up. You're gonna make sure that the batteries are not full by the time the customer gets here because I wanna test that DC charger uh, and it won't do anything if the batteries are full. Now, one other thing that we've done, tanks. So the tanks were in this Leader, Leader Gold van, they were just on the standard RV electronics. Now we've got them up here, fresh front, fresh rear, gray rear. All wired through, so we've rerun the cables and wired them in and given this unit power of the electronic smart signal converter. Yes, I put some water in the fresh rear tank so I could actually tell which, which was which, because we did have to cut and extend the tank wires. And then the other good thing that we've done as well is so master switch is all like your 12 volt ins and outs puts in right, but if you flick that, it doesn't kill the servo. So you turn that on and the servo still stays powered. Solar switch here was factory. That was just their factory isolator, but for AS3001, needs to be double pole. So that's why we've done the double pole one down there. We just added like an Anderson plug to the front of the van for a fridge in the front box. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I know these videos can get a little bit repetitive, but we just want to showcase the quality of the work that we can do. There's obviously a big hole in the market now of things getting done properly and getting certified. So this customer get that certificate, certificate of compliance. They get a job sheet, which basically goes through everything we've done, all the products, all the serial numbers, all the warranty periods on all their products, all the Victron gear. So Victron in Australia runs in a weird way where whoever supplies the Victron gear, that's your tech support avenue because they don't actually have like a call center for tech support. So I am the customer's tech support avenue for this system. I've got the system put up already onto the VRM portals and I've already emailed the customer that link. So they just need to click on the link, create an account for the VRM portal, say that they want access to the system. I go in, press accept, and then they can see it whenever they've connected this screen to the internet and then that way if these customers away somewhere and they've got a problem that they can't figure out themselves because after this video i'm also going to film another video in a sec personal video for the customer which takes them through the whole van all the fuses where they are what to look for if your dc charge is not working what to look for if your inverter is not working what to look for if the solar is not working any of that sort of stuff but yeah so if they're away got starlink or some sort of internet connection connect it to the internet i can jump on the portal online have a look and help them troubleshoot and I'll look at the portal and within 30 seconds, I'll know what's up. It's very good systems. And that's why we document everything so that when we, if I'm in the office, we can go back through and go, all right, all right, yep, they've got this part, this part, this part. And with the serial numbers on all the job sheets that we do, if something is a warranty job, we already know what the serial number is. We don't have to get the customer to chase serial number. Super simple, but yes, yeah, just the extra part of the service that we offer here at JT. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.